So the uh, blank is now uh, complete in terms of all the strips that are going to be added to it. Uh, I made a change at the last minute. I uh, decided to move the profile uh, a little further forward in the blank. And uh, so I added one more big strip up front and a section that I had planned on being milled off uh, ended up being uh, uh, needing to be uh, flat so I just filled and it was a piece of uh, uh, unfinished or uh, rough wood so I just filled it don't really worry about it too much because that's all going to be covered in glass um, but uh, it just allowed me to have some more flexibility dealing with because uh, I would have been back here before so now I've moved forward and that gives me a little more machining stock in the back third um, uh, I have also done a couple of tweaks to my uh, router sled <coughs> excuse me uh, one of the things that some of the guys were talking about that they were concerned with let's see if I can get this tilted and dealing with was the fact that the sled wants to rock on the uh, curved frame. So what I've done is I've milled or ground some uh, round head screws uh, flat and I've given myself a couple of holes in my uh, fixture so that I can move these around depending on what section I'm working on. And now that frame is uh, nice and firm on the on the fixture. Use some uh, sequoia that I had uh, here in the shop and that's just a, a softwood and it's not terribly strong but it was the right dimension for what I was needing and the right size, so it got picked. Um, I've marked out the positions of the uh, straps that hold the uh, rudder uh, to the gudgeons and just confirmed all of my uh, dimensions and whatnot. Um, you can see here, this is all waste back here. The other thing is, is that from the back of this tape, uh, forward is flat and uh, so at some point once I've done any camber back in this section I'll uh, be milling this section completely flat using a, a little different sled setup that I have and that sled setup will also allow me to mill these uh, straps uh, to the dimension I need and I'm thinking the way I'll deal with that is I'm gonna mill them a little uh, thinner or deeper, however you want to look at it, than I need and then I will, after I do my overall glassing of this rudder, I'll add strips of glass underneath there or in there to uh, bring the dimension up exactly where I want it because it just seems like it'd be nearly impossible to to get everything right off the first time. That blue tape right there shows my the actual addition to this rudder to get to be a balanced uh, rudder design. This shows the angle of the bottom of the boat. The bottom of the boat is actually uh, up in here, so I've given myself a, a good inch uh, clearance there. The, when I actually get done with all this, I'm going to be real careful because if this rudder ever wanted to break, it will want to break right here at that corner. So I'll be doing all kinds of round over uh, and transition in that area to make it uh, nice and smooth. And I probably will add some extra glass uh, through that section too. Um, so we're almost ready to start. Um, I don't know what else I can do at this point in time. Uh, oh, the other thing I did do is uh, made these 
bits here that once I cut this thing down, which I'll do uh, as soon as this thing comes out of the clamps, these legs or whatever you want to call them, they're just 3 8 bolts uh, through some uh, fur stock I have. And after I cut this, I'm going to glue these onto the uh, end of the uh, rudder and that will allow me to adjust and make sure the uh, rudder stays level even after I start curving the thing and uh, I can just turn the bolts over and uh, when I work on the other side. My big work table is already uh, level in all directions so it's a flat surface that I use for reference for all the different things that I build in here. Uh, so once this uh, rudder blank is uh, out of there, I'll add these and then I can square it up to the world and then add my um, rails that I have uh, for milling big slabs and whatnot. Uh, I'll add that to the table and, and we'll show you what that setup looks like. But my plan, the way I've built this fixture, is such that I can move the fixture, slide it front to back. I think that's the way I want to do probably 80% of this uh, rudder. Uh, but I've also set up the, the base such that when I want to work the nose side, I can run the uh, router easily up over the the front side and I may even make a, se a second template that uh, helps with doing that nose because I kind of see that as a problem. I mean that uh, anytime you have a router and you're trying to run it almost up and down vertically without some kind of fixturing it uh, is an issue. I'm kind of inclined to want to bring the slab up or in this case that's the front so it'll go the other way but uh, bring the whole thing vertical or nearly vertical to work that front nose. Um, so once I get a little further, I'll, I'll be uh, sorting through those issues. But uh, like I said, I, I, I can see that working the front nose of this rudder is uh, a little bit problematic uh, with the angles that you have if working on this thing horizontal. Whereas if I were to turn the blank vertically I can see some advantages but you know I have to work through that and, and see how I would actually work that out. Um, so that's where we are today, making headway. <laughs>